الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمداً عبده رسول Continuing with the description of punishment of the punishment of hell Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, and this is informing us of the fuel of hellfire. Allah says in verse 24, chapter Al Baqarah, Fattakunar al Lati wa Kuduhan Nasu al Hijara, Uibdat lil Kafiri. So fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for the disbelievers. Men, meaning humans, male or female. So the fuel is going to be stones and human beings. That is going to be the fuel of hellfire. So the choice is ours. The larger a person is, the more he is exposed to punishment. And for this reason, Allah Azza wa Jal enlarges the size of those who are in hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, he said the tooth and in a narration, it says, a moral tooth of the disbeliever in hellfire is the size of Mount Uhud. Let me pause here before I continue with the remaining part of the narration. Mount Uhud, having lived in Medina, I know. To go around it, you need about 15, 17 minutes by car. This is the size of Mount Uhud. That's only one tooth of the person. And then the Prophet ﷺ continues saying, and the thickness of his skin is a three-day journey. How much is going to be exposed to punishment and fire? A lot. Meaning, torture is going to be multiplied by great multiples that we cannot perceive. Because we cannot imagine a person's tooth being a size of a mountain that, it, that needs 15, 20 minutes by car to go around that mountain. We cannot. We cannot imagine the size of that person. But it's going to be a lot. Another narration by Abu Huraira, also in the book of Imam Muslim. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the distance between the two shoulders of a disbeliever in hellfire is a journey of three days for a fast rider on a horse not just anyone someone who is fast again reflecting the size the large size of those who will be punished in hellfire then Allah Azza wa Jal continues in verse 22 saying, لِطَّاغِينَ مَا آبَا For the transgressors, a place of return. 
Hellfire is going to be the destiny of disbelievers, deniers, transgressors, tyrants, oppressors, sinners. So we're not, a, we're not talking only about disbelievers. The believers who sin will be sub are subjecting themselves to punishment and those who died, unless Allah's mercy reaches them, they will be also punished. Al-Qurtubi said, transgressors describes any disbeliever or oppressor. Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen said, to transgress is to go beyond the limit. And the limit Allah Azza wa Jal had set was to worship Him and Him alone, to abide by His legislations, not to go and transgress the boundaries Allah Azza wa Jal set for us, do's and don'ts. It is going to be the final abode they deserve due to their transgression and denial. The following verse, Allah says, verse 23, Allah says, لَابِثِينَ فِيهَا أَحْقَابًا In which they will remain for ages, unending. Unending is with regards to the disbelievers. It is eternal for the disbelievers, but not for the believers. Why? Because the believers have something that differentiates them from the non-believers, which is their faith, their testimony of faith. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah differentiates them from the non-believers. So it is eternal with regards to the disbelievers. But it is not with regards to the believers. And the evidence for that is a narration, a long narration by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri. May Allah be pleased with him. And it was reported by Imam Ahmad, At-Tirmidhi, and Nasai, and others. And Shaykh Al-Albani, Rahmatullah Ali, ruled it to be authentic. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, When the believers are saved from hellfire, they're rescued and are safe meaning af after they pass over the bridge of hell, they will go and argue with Allah Azza wa Jal on behalf of their brothers in faith, interceding for them. So Allah Azza wa Jal would take him out of hellfire. Listen to this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is, they will be debate, they will be arguing with Allah as confident as any of you would, re would be arguing with his brother in this life about a matter he feels that is the truth. They will argue with Allah. They would say, Oh Allah, there are brothers of ours whom we don't see. They used, they used to pray with us. They used to fast with us. They used to perform jihad with us. And we don't see them. Allah will tell them, go to hell and get out of it anyone you recognize. So they would go and bring out of it 
a huge number of people. And then they would go back to Allah and say, we left no one we recognized, but we brought out. Then Allah Azza wa Jal would tell them, go back. And take out of hellfire anyone who's got the weight of a dinar, of faith in his heart. And then they would go back and bring out of it a huge number of people. And they would go back. And this continues back and forth until Allah Azza wa Jal tells them. Go back and take out of hellfire anyone who's got as little as an ant's weight of, of faith in his heart. And they would go back and take a huge number of people. Then Abu Sa'id, the narrator of the hadith, said, if you don't believe me, read the verse of Allah, in which Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةً وَإِن تَكُ حَسَنَةً يُضَاعِفْهَا وَيُؤْتِ مِنْ لَدُنْهُ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Indeed, Allah does not do injustice even if as much as an atom's or ant's weight. While if there is a good deed, He multiplies it and gives from Himself a great reward. Then they would go back and tell Allah, Oh Allah, we left no one in hellfire that has any goodness in him. Meaning, whoever is left now has no goodness in his heart. Then Allah the Almighty would say, the believers interceded. The prophets and messengers interceded. The angels interceded. The only thing left is the intercession of the most merciful. Then Allah Azza wa Jal would take out of it one hand grip or two from people, meaning believers, who had never done any good in their lives, and who were burned in hellfire. And they will be brought out of it, and water, called the water of life, will be poured on them, and then the Prophet ﷺ say, they will grow as a seed would grow if it was implanted next to a creek. Then they would grow and they would have on their necks the following written on it, saying, those who were freed by the most merciful. Those who were freed by the most merciful for no goodness in them, for no good, good deeds they've ever done, but by virtue of the mercy of the most merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will be told, go enter paradise. And you will have whatever you see in front of you is yours, and like it, meaning double what you can see. They would say, oh Allah, you've given us something that you've never given anyone from your creation. He said, I will give you more. Allah would say, I will give you more. They would say, what more can we get? How better can it get? Allah. Allah will tell them, I will be pleased with you.
I will be pleased with you and I will never be angry at you after today. And that will be the best reward that he can attain in paradise. That is why, with reference to the intercession of the believers to one another, Al Hassan al Basri, may Allah have mercy upon him, used to say, Make sure you befriend as many pious people as you can. Make sure you befriend as many pious people as you can, for they will come and intercede for you on the day of judgment. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from hellfire and admit us into paradise with His mercy. Allahumma ameen. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين